With NAB just around the corner, what exciting camera announcements can we expect from Blackmagic Design? Will Canon release anything at all? Will Sony burn the new Burana owners with a better, cheaper FX6 Mark II? Is Nikon poised to crush Canon with another feature-packed Z line of cameras? And will Panasonic announce anything new? <laughs> Last year, the camera tech industry made some major leaps forward. Sony kept us on our toes, Panasonic made a splash with the S5 Mark II X, which proved a massive success and had a lot of creators jumping ship from both Sony and Canon to their hybrid cameras. Red announced their flagship camera with built-in NDs, then promptly superseded it a couple of months later with a global shuttered version of the same camera before they were snapped up by Nikon. Canon limped over the line with a handful of firmware updates, leaving their users wondering what they're doing. And last but not least, Blackmagic gave us a full-frame cinema camera in a form factor that nobody wants. All jokes aside, the 2023 tech cycle was a good one. Now, before we start, all the information in this video is just from my own predictions. It's from rumor sites and conversations that we've all had online. Really, most of this video is our collective wish list, things that we've discussed here in the comments. So take it all with a massive grain of salt. And if I miss anything out, remind me in the comments below. Blackmagic's growth over the past decade is remarkable and undeniable. From their origins in broadcast converter boxes, they acquired Resolve and then leveraged that into the cinema camera industry. Now, in 2024, Blackmagic has become a multi-billion dollar business with some of the best cameras for the money on the market. Now that they've entered the full frame market with an outstanding camera, it's a bit harder to predict what Blackmagic's next move will be, but I am optimistic that it will be notable. Hopefully, it will be a full frame global shuttered Ursa because this is the Achilles heel of the Pocket 6K. The readout speeds are terrible and we're in a market where global shutters are rapidly gaining traction. But as I have discussed in other videos, for Blackmagic Design to remain a budget option, which really is their MO, they need to recycle a lot of components from sensors to camera bodies. So that full frame pocket sensor might just be moved into the Ursa body lineup. And as much as I hate to say this, it won't end up in a box shaped body. But Blackmagic, please prove me us, your users, wrong. The Ursa Mini Pro will see a shift to the L mount and a complete move away from CFast to CF Express media types, which I did predict two years ago. Remember, to keep costs down, Blackmagic needs to recycle parts and designs, so change is slower. Another thing to consider is Blackmagic's designs close ties with Apple, so it wouldn't surprise me to see Blackmagic go big and sensor stitch two 12K sensors together to accommodate the already growing demand for 14K plus high-res Apple Vision Pro content. Currently, they're the only company mass producing a camera that comes even close to what the Vision Pro requires. But I think the biggest change is coming to the Pocket 4K camera. And I hope I am wrong with this, but I don't think I will be, as this could either be the end of the line or the year it gets a total revamp. I've heard rumors of a Pocket Pro model with a new sensor, media types, and ND filters, but in the same form factor. But with all the third parties out there proving to Blackmagic Design that a box camera is feasible, they might just surprise us all. The biggest telltale sign a change is coming though is the release of the Micro Studio Camera G2. That camera is now using the Pocket 4K sensor, and if history can teach us anything, this is where Blackmagic Design sends sensors to die as they typically don't get used again in another product. But here's why I don't believe the rumors, and I doubt, I absolutely doubt, there will ever be another Pocket 4K ever again. Action! Good evening and welcome to Apple Park. Blackmagic's new iPhone camera app has experienced enormous success, surpassing every recent Blackmagic product and software release. This has undoubtedly captured their attention as a business. How could it not? It's the perfect funnel into their cinema camera ecosystem, but it also competes heavily with the Pocket 4K model, which retails for around the same price as what a lot of creators already have in their pockets. Meaning the iPhone 15 Pro with the Blackmagic camera app is Blackmagic's first true pocket cinema camera, a camera that you can always have with you and didn't cost Blackmagic design any money in hardware development. If the app remains a free download is debatable, but I think Grant Petty's intentions are clear and it will remain free. However, only time is going to tell how 
Blackmagic navigates this ever-evolving landscape. Speaking of landscapes, imagine what sort of decision one very conservative company named Canon needs to make before NAB. Imagine looking out from that industry high mountaintop watching as Nikon acquires red, Sony expands, marching all over your once dominant territories with Panasonic and Fuji hot on their heels just carving up more of your market share. Would you be concerned? I know I would be, especially when they've laid dormant for so long and so many users have just jumped ship. The Canon C200 is likely never going to be refreshed, which is a shame. The C500 Mark III and the C300 Mark IV will most likely be refreshed to RF lens mounts, which will see a further rise in product cost. But truth be told, with all the recent firmware updates and amazing releases from Sony highlighting a consumer shift away from cinema cameras to models like the R5C and FX3, this could mean no new cinema cameras from Canon this year. Canon may just opt to release the R1 and R5 Mark II, and with all the current global discounts and official pricing drops across the entire mirrorless line this week, I would think it would be safe to say this is the direction that they will be heading. We will see a lot of new mirrorless cameras from Canon being announced very soon, and they will all ship hopefully before the Olympics. The entry-level C70 is still an amazing camera, and it's most likely their best bang for buck camera they have right now. But if they can manage to get that 4K Super 35 sensor from the C70 into an R5C type body and call it the C200 Mark II, I believe they would have a massive hit on their hands. Sony is just killing it at the moment with their entire FX lineup. The FX6 and FX3 have propelled Sony into the absolute stratosphere and top of the market with some very notable movies being made with them. But as Sony does refresh their cameras as quickly as a British tourist gets barley belly, I wouldn't be surprised if they refresh this lineup starting with a Sony A7S IV at NAB and then slowly roll out the FX6 Mark II and the FX3 Mark II, all with global shutters. What will continue to change is the shift to smaller mirrorless cameras for high-end work. And this is where I see three other companies about to make some massive leaps forward. It's fair to say that Panasonic has totally ghosted their entire cinema camera division, opting to move forward with cameras like the S1H and developing that into the S5 Mark IIx. But it is time for the flagship to be refreshed, and there are some pretty heavy rumors floating around that we may see something in the coming months. With the S1 lineup officially being discontinued by Panasonic, we could be about to see a new 8K S1H Mark II or S2 H and S2R series of cameras with the better AF already present in the S5 Mark II lineup. But resolution and AF wouldn't be enough in the current market to call that a flagship. Hopefully they'll opt for faster media, a global shutter, internal RAW of some kind, internal NDs, and maybe a mini SDI on the S2H. It would also be great if this came with the BGS1H's form factor, but with the S1H's screen attached somehow. That would be a dream camera. Nevertheless, the new S1H Mark II will most likely retail at a similar price point to the Canon R5C and FX3. And whatever Panasonic decide to do, they will face some pretty stiff competition from Nikon. Nikon already has an amazing camera, the Z9, and that's got a lot of great features. Plus the company has now acquired Red Digital Cinema and currently also have started a very aggressive sales campaign here in Europe with up to 1,000 euros off cameras and just weeks ago released the new Z9 version 5 firmware. So they could remain quiet on the hardware front while the acquisition of RED is completed and decide how RED's technology can be implemented into their own cameras and possibly a future cinema camera lineup. Because hot on their heels is Fujifilm and Fujifilm is the ever-growing Godzilla of the camera market. They produce some of the best cameras on the planet and like Kodak, have generations, generations of intellectual property that have shaped how we see photography and cinematography today. With the GFX 102 and the X106 already released, we could see an X-T6 and X-H3S cameras being announced at NAB. But what I think a lot of people would like to see is Fujifilm take all of that knowledge they have in film stocks and simulations and put them into either a Super 35 or medium format true cinema camera, not a hybrid like they already have. If they could do this with a high dynamic range global shuttered sensor with internal NDs and launch it with a dedicated prime lens set, I could see many people buying into that system and sticking with it for years to come. These are only my thoughts on what some of the brands we use every day might bring to NAB 2024. But what do you think? Am I way off with my predictions? Let me know and if you wanna see what's already been released this year, you can check out some of my other videos right here. 
Swipe up, tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop. Wait till the